1. Can you believe the Magne of Eunice is 13? I'm talking about the Universe Ticket Survival Show Group Eunice, their youngest member Sowen is 13, I'm done, literally I'm done, K-pop's obsession with youth isn't exactly breaking news, but when it comes to throwing a 13-year-old into the deep end of idle life, it's a whole new level of reckless, sure, Sowen's got talent that could probably outshine a seasoned pro, but talent isn't a free pass to skip childhood and jump straight into a career that's notorious for its relentless pressure cooker. Environment, the fact that the audition age limit for universe ticket was set at 12, that's not just pushing the envelope, it's sending it through a shredder, it's like they're scouting for the next big thing in a middle school cafeteria, and seeing Sowen on stage, a literal 13 years old, it's not just dystopian, it's a glaring red flag that's being ignored for the sake of entertainment, remember Sowen meltdown over line distribution in the survival show? That's child's play compared to the real deal of idle life, even the most strong-willed adult can crack under that spotlight, so what chance does a kid have? It's not about if she can handle it, it's about why she should even have to, and let's talk about the fans who are cool with this. If you're not seeing the problem with minors debuting, then you're missing the forest for the trees, it's not about the glitz and glamour, it's about the long-term effects, look at the second-gen idols, like SNSD's Seo Hyun, who debuted at 15 and are still dealing with the aftermath in their 30s, therapy sessions, feeling stuck in time, caffeine overdoses, insomnia, harassment. It's a laundry list of issues that no one should have to deal with, let alone someone who's barely a teenager, so, for those who are quick to defend the industry and dismiss the concerns about debuting minors, maybe take a step back, it's not about stifling talent, it's about protecting kids from an industry that can chew them up and spit them out before they've even had a chance to grow up, and if history has taught us anything, it's that the shiny surface of K-pop hides a much darker reality, so yeah, maybe it's time to rethink this whole idol at any age mentality. 2. There's a way to make shorter songs work, but companies don't give a crap about that. Honestly, these short s tracks feel like glorified choruses, these micro TikTok songs popping up all over are like those tiny hors d'oeuvres that leave you asking, where's the rest of it? Sure, a banger like Kiss of Life's Midas Touch can wrap up nicely under 3 minutes, but that's a rare gem in a sea of musical fast food, most tracks these days are so rushed, you'd think they were running late for a bus, and let's talk about the chorus obsession, it's like some producers think if they slap a catchy hook on it, nobody will notice the rest of the song is as empty as a politician's promises, for instant. Hybe labels are turning into a factory for these one-hit wonders where the chorus is king, and the verses are just peasants. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for belting out K-pop English lyrics and busting a move to the latest dance craze, but let's not kid ourselves. These snack-sized songs are a symptom of a bigger problem. Music labels are pumping out these bite-sized beats because they're easy to digest and forget, perfect for our goldfish-like attention spans. Vocal talent? Who needs that when you've got flashy choreo and a beat drop? It's all about making a quick buck in an industry that's starting to value quantity over quality. And sure, social media loves it. Shorter songs mean more space for ads, more clicks, more cash. 3. Whenever someone doesn't like a K-pop track, the term noise music get thrown around like confetti at a parade, it's like, if the beat drops too hard for your delicate eardrums, suddenly it's noise. Please, ATs and Stray Kids tracks making your ears bleed? Maybe it's just the sound of your music taste horizons expanding. Might want to get that checked out, and this whole too much business, come on, since when did too much become a bad thing? Last time I checked, more is more was the mantra of pop music, and let's talk about this noise music ruining K-pop narrative, ruining, or revolutionizing. Because let's face it, without pushing boundaries, we'd still be stuck in the era of cookie-cutter pop, Sure, not every experimental sound is going to be a hit, but at least it's not another snoozefest ballad, now, actual noise music? That's a whole different ballgame, it's like comparing a spicy tuna roll to a ghost pepper, both have their place, but they're not even in the same league, so, maybe it's time to retire the term noise music from the K-pop lexicon unless you're ready to dive into a conversation about the avant-garde art of auditory assault, and for those who think liking a loud K-pop track is a sign of low-quality taste. Maybe it's just a sign of being alive and well in the 21st century, music evolves, tastes change, and what's noise to one person is the soundtrack to another's life. So, next time you want to throw shade at someone's music preference, remember, just because it's not your cup of tea doesn't mean it's not someone else's double shot espresso. 4. Idols shouldn't become CEOs of their company. Creativity and business acumen are often seen as two ends of a spectrum, and it's rare to find someone who can wear both hats without one slipping off, take the big three, SM, JYP, and YG, they started as artists and founded empires, but they weren't juggling spreadsheets and creative sessions at the same time. They had the sense to delegate the business heavy lifting to those who dream in numbers and strategies, it's like expecting a painter to run an art gallery. Sure, they know what looks good, but do they know what sells? 
There's a chasm between creating art and selling it, and let's talk about scale, a small indie label or a boutique gallery might survive with an artist at the helm, but as the business grows, so does the complexity, it's not just about passion anymore, it's about payrolls, marketing, legal stuff, the unsexy underbelly of the art world, so, while the romantic notion of the idle CEO is appealing, it's not practical. It's like asking a fish to climb a tree, sure, it might manage a few inches, but it won't be pretty, and it won't end well for the fish or the tree, idols need to focus on their craft, and let the professionals handle the business, that way, everyone gets to play to their strengths, and nobody ends up a jack of all trades, master of none. 5. It was reported that Espos Winter underwent surgery for a collapsed lung, Winter's situation is a stark reminder of the fragility of health, even for those in the limelight, the decision to undergo surgery for a pneumothorax is no small matter, and it's a relief to hear that SM is prioritizing her recovery over her schedule, considering the recurrence risk associated with the condition. The road to recovery from such a surgery is indeed a marathon, not a sprint, it demands a significant pause from life's regular programming, no singing, no dancing, no quick movements, just rest, and lots of it, for an idol like Winter, whose career is built on performing, this must be a tough pill to swallow but health comes first, and fans will surely understand and support that, personally, as someone who went through the same thing as her, I really feel for her, facing a spontaneous pneumothorax is no joke, it hits you out of the blue like a sucker punch, I had to drive myself to the hospital, feeling like I've been stabbed, only to have medical staff shrug it off initially, it's a roller coaster of pain and fear, and that moment when they yank the tube out of my chest, absolute agony, it was the worst pain I've felt in my whole life, recovery isn't a walk in the park either, it took me months, it's a slow, frustrating crawl back to normal lung function, winter is lucky to have acted swiftly, here's to hoping her recovery is smooth and swift, and that she'll be back to doing what she loves with the same vigor as before. 6. So Somi is coming up with a makeup brand? Somi has started her own makeup brand called GLYF, that's like a DJ dropping a country track in the middle of a rave, unexpected and kinda offbeat. Celebrities' makeup lines are like a dime a dozen in Hollywood. But when an idol does it, it's like, hold up, since when did music come with a side of mascara? Sure, idols branching out isn't breaking news, they've got their fingers in all sorts of pies, restaurants, real estate, you name it. But makeup? That's a whole new ball game. And let's not forget the drama that sometimes follows these idol-led ventures. It's not always a glow-up story. Sometimes it's more of a cautionary tale. We all know how YG's disaster clothing line ended up. Now, let's talk about Somi and these celebrities' makeup lines. These beauty brands aren't exactly a solo act, you've got the big parent companies like L'Oreal playing the role of producer, funding the gig, running the show, they've got a whole crew ready to roll. Out the red carpet, marketing, management, accounting, they're pumping out white label products like they're going platinum, it's like having a hit single ready to go. Just slap on an idol's name and watch the cash flow. But don't get it twisted, Somi's not in the lab mixing up shades, she's got the industry clout, sure, but this ain't an indie label hustle, it's a strategic play. More about keeping her face on billboards than about stirring up the beauty pot, and if the brand ends up being a flop, well, she's got the safety net of tax write-offs and free promo, she's not risking it all like those indie beauty bosses, so, let's see if her brand will be the next big hit or just a flash in the pan. 7. Let's Review Flower Rhythm by ARTMS This group is teasing us with a quintet of pre-releases before their debut album, kicking things off with Birth, but let's be honest, Birth was more like a brainstorming session set to music than a polished gem, it's like they threw a bunch of musical ideas at the wall to see what would stick, and not everything did, now, Flower Rhythm steps up with a bit more structure, but it's still drenched in the group's signature quirkiness, it's as if they're trying to serve us a full course meal but end up giving us just the appetizers tasty, but leaving us craving the main dish, I get it, there's this whole vibe of admire the artistry going on, and Flower Rhythm is definitely a feast for the ears with its rich production, the girls are all in, giving us drama, flair, and a vocal roller coaster that matches the track's unpredictable beats, they've got synergy, no doubt, and those last few beats? Pure teaser material for what's to come, but here's the tea, I'm all about those smooth melodies and slick beats, and flower rhythm feels like it's still in the oven, half-baked, it's like they've got the ingredients for a hit, but the recipe's not quite there yet, the hooks? They need to pack more punch to really get us hooked, despite all that, it's clear ARTMS is rebuilding their fandom, there's a bunch of fans out there ready to dissect every note and lyric, diving deep into the band's lore, so, while flower rhythm might not be everyone's cup of tea, it's brewing a storm for those who are into that kind of sound adventure.